I was absolutely positively wrong. We're going to talk about that for just a little bit today. Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, <clears throat> all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. What you're watching is you're watching me walk. Almost 24 months ago, I couldn't do this. I could barely stand for a couple minutes without severe pain. Now I'm out here walking every day and doing lots of other things. If you're returning to the channel, thanks for stopping back by. It means a lot to me that you choose to spend just a few moments of your day with me. I'd like to ask everybody to help out just a little bit. Because this message is so important, hit that thumbs up button, drop down in the comments and say hi Bob. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. All these things that are absolutely free help me spread the word that it's never too late to change your life. I'm almost 61 years old. I'm doing things now that I couldn't do when I was 40, like walking every day, going to the Y to work out on the cable machine, doing my own yard work, cutting my own grass, and the list just goes on and on and on. So please help me get the word out. But let's go ahead and talk about what I was wrong about. If you had asked me, and I said this to many of my friends over the last 20 years or so, they said, is gout hereditary? And of course, the so-called science says, no, it's not hereditary. But the argument I always backed up with was, <clears throat> well, if gout is not hereditary, then why did my dad have gout? Why does my mom have gout? And why does my brother have gout? That seems like a very strong correlation that gout is actually hereditary. And see folks, this is where we get into trouble on looking at associative data. Because one thing does not necessarily mean that it has a causal relationship. As I now know, that was absolutely wrong. The thing that is inherited, so to speak, is eating habits. I grew up learning from my mom and my dad and then later my stepdad how to eat, what to eat, when to eat, all of those things. And my brother grew up in the same house. He learned the same lessons. You know, the entire time I was slowly sliding downhill and suffering part of why you know, I've talked many times before that we don't question. We didn't question doctors back when I was that age because we didn't have the internet. I couldn't have walked down to the corner and back with a phone. Well, maybe Radio Shack might have might have had a big enough cord for that if I put connectors together. But you know what I'm saying. Now I've forgotten what I was saying. <laughs> no, the, the, just because it seems like it's causally affected or, you know, the relationship is very strong 
doesn't mean that it's true. And that's why science is so important. Actual, real science. And right now, in the diet, exercise, nutrition space, there isn't any. Because it is absolutely impossible to lock people in a lab for multiple decades and run controlled experiments. You know, good luck getting that passed an ethics committee, let alone getting it paid for. So I understand how we all get fooled into thinking, oh, well, this is really good stuff. This is absolutely settled science. The science is settled is probably one of the most unscientific things you can say. Because science, true science, is always being questioned and experimented upon to see if what you think is true is actually true. But yes, it's not gout that is inherently hereditary. It's the habits, it's the what you eat that causes the inflammation, that causes the gout, and many other things. Does heart disease run in families? Yeah, it does, but is it hereditary? No, it's not. The habits that form when we're kids is what makes things seem hereditary when they're not actually hereditary. Hopefully that made some sense. But look at this day. It looks much nicer than it is. As you can see, I've got on my heavy flannel shirt today because it's not, I would certainly would not call this cold out but after being out at the miniature golf course, working in 85 degree temperatures, and even my walk yesterday was about 75, 76 degrees or so. I was out here in t-shirts, and right now it's 58 degrees. The first part of the front came through last night and it's cooled off quite a bit. And we're supposed to get another little front move through this evening. And it's supposed to be kind of cold and nasty for the weekend. So we'll see what happens. I know this hasn't been much of a walk today, but I had dance class yesterday. And with only four and a half weeks to go till concert, which for those of you in Omaha, if you want to come out and see it, it's on May the 18th. I'm not sure where yet, I haven't asked. I'm sure I can find out, but... Oh, let me get out of the sun. There we go, now you can see me. Or at least I can see my phone again. But, yeah. Just be very careful when, especially these people that are so confident, maybe even so arrogant, is to stand there and spout their so-called science at you. Dig into it a little bit and realize that anybody that's going to say this is absolutely the way it is, probably trying to sell you something. As I said, hopefully some of what I said today made sense. That's what I've got for you today, folks. Don't forget, get out there, be 1% better. Today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in the next one.